Hello, this is Brian. Today is beautiful Sunday, September 26, 2021. I am along the right by the junction of we're here, North Main Divide Road turns into dirt, starts heading up the mountain before it loops to Long Canyon Road. So I'm right near Blue Jay Campground. Yes, again. However, found this one little spot. I've passed by it countless times and I always know it was a pretty neat little little area but notice here how arid chapar the chaparral looks. See how arid and stuff. But then if you're coming up pass by this one little one little spot that's always really verdant. And here it is right here. There's a little spring or a little seep in this area, so that's why that explains this patch of willows and other riparian vegetation. So you can see here, it gets very lush. Like I said, this is North Main Divide Road, right before it turns into dirt and it continues on this paved Long Canyon Road. And this beautiful little nook here in the Santa Ana Mountains. And when I say beautiful, I mean beautiful. Now, you see down this little, this, I'm guessing this is a little portion of Long Canyon here. A little, you see as you go down there, you start getting some sycamores, some California sycamores and some coast live oaks. And you know, like this little spot right here, a little spring. If you notice when you're driving up this way, there's always there's always seems to be water on the road. Well, it's because there's a little spring here. A little beautiful little spring. Not much water in it, but just enough subsurface flow for these willows to grow. Then we got some other interesting plants here as well. When you got when you got water the biodiversity skyrockets really fast. Here is predominantly a royal willow, Salix lasiolopis. This is a predominant large shrub over here. So we're going towards the end of where there's probably any form of water. You can see the willows continue all the way over to here. So there must be some type of subsurface flow. After this point, it's basically too dry for the willows. You can see we've got a lot of Salix lasiolopis over here. And we also have a couple other types of willows too. Mostly Salix lasiolopis. It's a royal willow is probably our most common willow here in Southern California. But what appears we also have what looks like this one I'm having a hard time telling you this is Salix lasiandra or Salix lavigata. So either Pacific Willow or, or uh, Red Willow. The point, the, the pointy buds kind of suggest Salix uh, Livigata. So I'm going with Red Willow, Salix Livigata. Again, more Salix Lasiolopus. This is your dime a dozen willow here in Southern California. It's everywhere, especially in canyons. And of course, a sunflower family plant that looks a lot like a willow has one of its common names called seep willow. It's actually uh, a sunflower family plant. It's called, uh, mule, also called mule fat. Bacris salicifolia salicifolia. And of course, as we get closer to the water source itself, things get really tangled and jungle, jungle-like over here. Of course, we've got a beautiful coast live oak here, Quercus agrifolia, variety agrifolia. Then we got some, this is where the willows get really thick. And it appears that we have a Gooding Black Willow. Gooding's Black Willow right here, Salix Goodingy. The leaves are very much like uh, Gooding's Black Willow. Eventually, these things are going to become quite large trees. Though, I'm sure with the compaction of the soil and everything, I don't know how large that will actually get. But that's a tree that can get up to at least 60 feet tall. And then we get... Uh, Typha species, T-Y-P-H-A. This is the, the cattails. I'm not sure if this is Typha latifolia. I don't think it is. But there are a couple other species of Typha that I haven't really 
unfortunately haven't really taken the time to really learn yet. Uh, We got some more interesting stuff around here too. Let's see. Good. Anything good? Oh, I'm uh, just uh, taking a look at the different plant species here. It looks like we got. Uh, I think we got. Uh, don't we have a giant stream orchid over here too? I think I, we do. I'm not a plant guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All I do know is that there is an underground stream here. That's why it's always wet. I know it's beautiful over here. Yeah. All right, you have a good day. You too. Take care. Alright, so let's see. As I was uh, talking about, uh, I had mentioned giant stream orchid, Epipactus gigantea. It appears uh, that we do have a population of this plant here. Unfortunately, it's not the season of flowering. That was a, a Forest Service uh, gentleman. I guess he's working in uh, the area near Blue Jay Campground. But as I was mentioning, giant stream orchid. Well, I see some plants that appear to be them. Uh, this will be the first time I've ever seen them. Fortunately, it's not the season for flowers, so you're not going to get to see the, the beautiful orchid flowers that they get on them. But these plants here, with these seed capsules, I believe these are them. These look like uh, giant stream orchid plants. They got the parallel venation on the leaves, which is very suggestive of a monocot. And orchids are an enormous family in the monocot group of flowering plants. So it appears that we do have giant stream orchid here. I've been hoping to find this plant for a while, but I've never actually parked and taken the time to actually walk over here. But I believe these are them. I believe these are the seed capsules of Epipactus gigantea. So it appears that, yeah, we do have a population of it over here. I've been reading about it in Fred M. Roberts and Robert Allen's book called Wildflowers of Orange County in the Santa Ana Mountains, and they do mention a seep along North Main Divide Loop. North Main Divide Loop meaning the paved portion of North Main Divide that comes from Ortega Highway, wraps its rope around, and then right over there turns into the paved portion, the paved, continues as a paved uh, Long Canyon Road and meets back with Ortega. So this is the North Main Divide Loop that Fred M. Roberts and Robert Allen refer to in their Wildflowers of Orange County and the Santa Ana Mountains. So this is the area. So it does appear. Uh, it looks like we do have some giant stream orchid plants. And those are the ones with those uh, really thick leaves and very strong parallel veins. And again, here's the plant I'm talking about right here in the middle of the frame. I believe that is Epipactus gigantea. I'm pretty sure of it, actually. But just wanted to take some time to appreciate this little spot. I love this little little spring right here that really gives this one tiny area just such a lushness. And we're surrounded by all this dry chaparral and sage scrub. And we also got, and I did a video on this plant last week, you can see the red flowers in there. That's uh, California fuchsia, Epilobium condom subspecies condom. So, and then we also have some other plants. Like I said, we got a lot of, we got quite a bit of mule fat and arroyo willow. And we also have some type of, uh, this plant here, gallium species, called bed straw. Not too, not too hip to my gallium species. We also have some hedge nettles in the genus Stachys, S-T-A-C-H-Y-S. I believe this is Stachys rigida, variety rigida, I believe. I believe this is the, the, the hedge nettle we're looking at right here. This appears to be Stachys rigida, variety rigida. There's another variety called variety quercitorum, but I think that's more of a woodland, woodland plant. This one seems to be more of a seat plant, and I think variety rigida is more of a seat plant. It's a member of the mint family, Lamiaceae, and it's got these mint-like, whitish, slightly purplish flowers. Kind of hard to see. Right there. Your typical lipped flowers that are common in Lamiaceae. So, just a nice little area of biodiversity. Oh, 
before I go, there's another species of plant here too. I wonder if that's a giant chain fern. I think there's a giant chain fern in there too. I think. It's kind of small for your, what we'd expect for a giant chain fern. That's Woodwardia fimbriata, but it's a lot larger, has a lot larger frond on it than any other uh, species I'm, that I usually see here. It's that plant right there in the middle of the screen. It's kind of hard because it's in the shade, so it's not exactly easy to see, but I think that might be a giant chain fern. It's kind of small for what you'd expect for Woodwardia fimbriata, but. Oh, and yeah, and there's even a Fremont cottonwood over here. Populus Fremonti Fremonti. So, <laughs> this little spot's got a lot of biodiversity. And here's a type of a, a thread torch or a, a paintbrush. Not too familiar with this species here. It's not the type I usually see, which is a uh, wavy leaf, and that's definitely not it. It's a different different type. I'm not sure exactly what paintbrush that is, but I could always look it up and put a comment on it. Got narrow, very narrow leaves on it, and it's got an orange, uh, orange, orange flower bracts. They're not the actual flowers; those are flower bracts. Then, what else do we have? Just figured I would try to show off this beautiful spot. More California fuchsia right up here, right above everything. So I think they like to be a little bit away from the water, where it's not too waterlogged. But here's another. Here's 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 an orchid leaf right here. This is uh, the Epipacus Epipacus gigante I was telling you about up close. And then we got this plant here with these beautiful yellow flowers. There's some more of them over this way, and that is marsh primrose, March evening primrose. That is Oenothera or, or ugh, Oenothera. Elada subspecies hirsutissima. Common late summer bloomer, summer and maybe early fall bloomer along these seeps. It's, I believe, a biennial, and it's in the Onagraceae, the evening primrose family. Same family as the, uh, the Epilobium conum, the uh, California fuchsia I was telling you about. And I believe California fuchsia's relative is here as well. Another relative of California fuchsia. It's this little kind of stringy plant right here. It's mostly stringy because of the wispy seed capsules. That appears to be Epilobium ciliatum. Willow herb. And that's another plant found in these marshy areas. This is this plant right here that's kind of wispy, kind of narrow and everything. Well, if you want to, if you, if you love being in a biologically distinct, distinctive area and a very biologically diverse area like the Santa Ana Mountains. Biodiversity gets a lot more ins insane when you got a water source in these very dry, usually very dry mountains. So next time you come to the Santa Ana Mountains and you find one of these little streams or little springs here, make sure, make sure you bring a wildflower guide and check it out. Or if, or, if, or if you know most of the plants, just come here anyways and just enjoy it. It's beautiful here. Beautiful little spot. Pass it all the way when I go to the Blue Jay Campground area. This is the first time I've actually taken the time here to stop and appreciate it up close. But well, that was just a little tour of this little seep near Blue Jay Campground. Hope you found this video interesting. And thanks for watching, and I will see you on my next video.